Hello, my name is Lydia Makarov, and I am the Chief Executive of the Fight Bladder Cancer Charity. Fight Bladder Cancer was founded by bladder cancer patient Andrew Winterbottom and his wife T. And Andrew said to me, it is crucial that everyone affected by bladder cancer, patients, carers, families and friends, have a reliable place to come to for support, information and advice. And this was his ethos when he founded the charity 12 years ago. When I joined the charity as chief executive in 2019, one of the first questions that I asked was how many people are diagnosed with bladder cancer each year in the UK? It was a simple question, but it was a question that I, find, I found very difficult to answer in 2019. One of the first things that I did was I went to the Cancer Research UK website and I asked how many new cases of bladder cancer are there each year? And the Cancer Research UK website said 10,292, which seemed a little low. So I looked very closely at this data and it said that it was from ICD 10 C67, which led me to this book here, the International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems, 10th revision, also called ICD-10. And this is published by the World Health Organization and lists every single disease that the World Health Organization has ever recognized. Luckily these days, it's not only available as a book, but also for free on their website. So I did a little bit of digging here. I went to the ICD-10 uh, version in 2019 and looked to see what is C67 malignant neoplasm of bladder and that is how cancer research uk was classifying bladder cancer but there are many different types of bladder cancers so uh, let's let's take a little bit of a detour and let's look inside the bladder here we have a diagram of the t stages of bladder cancer defining how far the cancer has spread we have fat here this layer here and then we have muscle, which is this dark red layer here. We have CIS carcinoma in situ. Although this is a type of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, it is an aggressive form which may spread more quickly than other types. We also have TA here, T1 here, and then when we see T2, we can see that it has invaded the bladder, it has invaded the bladder muscle, so it is muscle invasive bladder cancer. T3, also muscle invasive bladder cancer, and T4. And we need to remember that bladder cancer affects everyone. We have a story here from Danielle who said, at the age of 25, I became pregnant with my first child. Everything went smoothly up until I started having symptoms of urinary tract infections. I visited my GP, but even after several courses of antibiotics, my symptoms still persisted. I discussed my growing concern with her who told me, don't worry, some pregnant women are just unlucky. You're too young for bladder cancer. And yet eventually she was diagnosed with bladder cancer. So it's essential that we're really counting everyone who is diagnosed with bladder cancer. We need this for workforce. We need this for support. And we need this to make sure that we get the right treatments to the right people at the right time. So I dug out that virtual book again, the International Classification of Diseases version 10, and had a deeper dive. And I discovered that bladder cancer is not only C67, it's also here in situ neoplasms, carcinoma in situ. And it's also here, D41.4, neoplasm of uncertain or unknown behavior bladder. And so hospitals are not only coding bladder cancer as C67, they are also coding bladder cancer as D09.0 and D41.4 when they're treating people with bladder cancer. And so when we go back here to this diagram, if we want to capture all of these different types of T stages, we need to make sure that we're using all three of these ICD-10 codes, not just C67. So I was absolutely delighted when the Get Data Out team contacted me. I had some fantastic meetings with other charities, with clinicians, with statisticians, and these were some of the questions that the Get Data Out team asked all of us. How might 
how might we group urinary tract cancers into the get data out format? What ICD-10 codes will be involved? How we might define urinary tract cancers? Are there any big differences in morphology groups in the urinary tract cancers? What work has been published on these sites already? Is there any work analyzing this group in progress? And it was a fantastic discussion that we had over many months in order to build consensus. And this is what we ended up with. And I was so delighted to see this on the Public Health England website. So you can see here that it says bladder 667 or D09.0 or D41.4. And this is really wonderful to see this broader definition of bladder cancer accepted and implemented by Public Health England and the Get Data Out team. And then the big day came and we launched the website and you can see here that we have 18,144 people who are diagnosed with bladder cancer each year in England. But we live in a United Kingdom, so what about the other nations? We had an amazing volunteer called Bill who painstakingly wrote freedom of information requests to the other devolved nations in order to get their data. And they wrote back and they said, Scotland, 1,691 diagnoses each year, Wales, 669 each year, Northern Ireland, 226. So this is a total annual incidence of bladder cancer in the UK of 20,730. So we still have some work to do. Yesterday, I went to the clinical knowledge summaries on the NICE website, and I saw that still, unfortunately, they say around 10,000 new bladder cancers are diagnosed each year in the UK. So if you are responsible for the clinical knowledge summaries at NICE and you are watching this, uh, then please, I urge you to update your data using Public Health England's uh, information. Uh, it would make a huge difference to all of the people living with bladder cancer around the UK. And I do see that you have started to do this. So at one of your uh, recent technology assessments, one of the recent NICE technology assessments, uh, they did say indeed that there are 20,500 people diagnosed with bladder cancer each year. So that is wonderful to see. And my mission is to make sure that I don't hear this story ever again. So Clive said, I'd never heard of bladder cancer before I was diagnosed. It wasn't until I was having the flexi-cystoscopy done and the doc said, you've got bladder cancer. So I hope that we can all work together to raise awareness of bladder cancer, increase our data and improve outcomes for everyone affected by bladder cancer around the UK. Thank you.